Hey, so we're back with Kerbal Space Program to Infinity and Beyond, our quest to get to the Mun. And we are going to, uh, this is our surprise, surprise Mark 1 ship, but I'm going to get rid of all of this nonsense right here. Switch us back to 3 degrees of symmetry and we'll grab a decoupler. I'm basically just rebuilding. I need more of these. Uh, I'm basically just rebuilding that first rocket that turned out surprisingly well for us. Before I accidentally made a huge mistake and decided to go with uh, liquid fuel engines as opposed to solid fuel boosters. So I think we'll just stack like three of these up here. Oh, we don't need a decoupler on top of a decoupler. What are we, we're not making an exhibit joke here. So what if we had like three solid fuel boosters like that and then we put one set of like triple or sorry double liquid fuel uh, liquid fuel tanks followed by liquid fuel engines like this sort of i kind of think that this might be too heavy to even lift off uh i mean this looks like a substantially bulky ship and well if we can do it i mean the solid fuel boosters are what we're what we're going to look for to do that with so we'll grab our struts here and this is one thing i really like about the symmetry uh tools when you use them with struts it automatically attaches everything together all at once, which is really nice. At least depending on the, the amount of, or the type of symmetry you've got going on here. So we'll put one more in like this. So all of our solid fuel boosters should be okay. And then we might as well tie our fuel tanks together uh, more than anything, just to make sure that nothing is gonna wobble too much as we move. So we'll put another one up here, because why not? Better safe than sorry. We'll make this surprise, surprise Mark II. May or may not be an improvement on the original. Uh, but otherwise, we'll just try to launch here and we'll see how this goes. This is a, a truly massive ship, which makes me think it might not even lift off, but we'll crank our throttle. We'll turn uh, SAS on here and then we'll get started. Oh God. Um, Possibly this is slightly too heavy. We're almost off of the launch pad though, which is, is a start, I guess. <laughs> well, well, of course, I mean, just getting off the launch pad is, is step one. Now we're actually, it's going to be easier and easier for every single uh, set of solid fuel boosters that we have. So let's get that. I'm not sure. I mean, we probably just killed like half of the people on the launch area. Although they probably shouldn't have been standing there anyway, I guess all things considered. But I wouldn't necessarily say this was encouraging so far, but we're definitely not dead as of yet, despite the fact that our ship is wobbling just a little bit. I think this is going okay. I'm not saying we're, we're breaking that 150,000 mark, because we're not going up nearly straight enough. We're creating like a, like slicing a curve out of the sky right now. But man, I like that symmetry tool. Alright, so after this, we will be up to our liquid fuel engines, which I'm just hoping have enough power. Oh god, stop rolling. Oh man. SAS, help me out here. Uh, have enough power to reverse our descent here, I guess would be step one, because I really don't want to plummet back down to the earth. Oh man. I don't know about that. It looks like it's starting to slow down. The roll on the ship is, is a little bit discouraging. And we are definitely still, I mean, going up, but very, very slowly. This, this ship has a weight problem. I don't think there's any question about that. We need a little bit more lift and a little bit less everything else, I guess. Come on, we've gotta be getting close to the point where like, our, our thrust is counteracting our descent. Okay, it's coming up soon, but I mean, so is the end of our fuel reserves. Unless we're, like, literally in equilibrium right now. Like, is that the problem? Okay, now we should start climbing. Like, our surface, uh, our velocity should start climbing up. Here we go. Slowly but surely. After losing almost all of our momentum going forward. I think it is pretty clear we are probably not going to set a personal best here. And this was, uh, you know, a fairly discouraging run overall, I would say. So after this, we don't want to use our decouplers. But I actually... Uh, no, we don't want to use our decouplers after this, because we have another fuel tank to go through. You know what? It's possible, I guess. If our acceleration keeps climbing at this rate, then we might be able to 
set of personal bests. I mean, we barely got over 100,000 with our last one. We can time warp a little bit here, which I think is going to be necessary uh, because this is taking forever. So after this, it should automatically go to our next set of fuel tanks. Climbing slowly but surely. I mean, not really surely, but slowly. That's for damn sure. We've gone to our second fuel tanks here. I mean, it should accelerate faster as we run out of fuel as well, because, I mean, we're losing more weight with respect to the fuel. So that's good, I guess, but... I'm pretty skeptical about our chances overall here. But hey, it's more encouraging than it looked when it barely got off the launch pad. There is that. Yeah, our acceleration's pretty solid right now. I'm hoping... I mean, this fuel's lasting a long time. I wonder, like, when we get down to just our, our top module here, it might be able to even hit, like, 500 meters per second? If so, I think the record is within our grasp. Obviously... You know, the Mun might be a little bit far away at this point. But man, well, we are actually kind of accelerating like crazy. I think this might be more encouraging than I thought it was. What a beautiful, beautiful sunrise over the eastern hemisphere there. So, we're almost on to our lasty couple. And there it is. And we're starting to decelerate again. It looks like a, like a, there's a, some elements of human error as well. Like, I definitely want to uh, work on my decoupling a little bit so we don't run into this situation too much. Well, I think it's pretty clear we're going to hit 500 meters per second. And if we hit 500 meters per second, I think it's entirely possible that we will be able to get to 150,000. I mean, we're already at 50,000. And we still have three quarters of our fuel for this final stage left. And everything looks like it's going fairly well. I mean, Rondolf Kerman is definitely, like, he's enjoying the view. Like, oh my god, it's full of stars. Matt B. Kerman, or Matt Bull Kerman, and uh, Kelney Kerman. Probably should have done a psych evaluation on them before they came up, because it doesn't really look like they're that interested in the idea of going to space right now. I think the hallmark of these last two Kerbal Space Program videos, as we cross the 500 meters per second mark, uh, has been me being like, there's no way this is going to work. And they're like, oh. Wait, it actually works totally fine. So I guess what we would want to do with this one is maybe just stack like more fuel tanks on top and get rid of one set of solid fuel boosters. I wonder if that would be enough to make this happen. I think it's basically a foregone conclusion that we're going to hit uh, 150,000 meters here. Let's crank up our speed as much as we can. We can't crank it up. Any oh, can't warp faster than two times acceleration. Or can't warp faster than two times while the ship is under acceleration. That's crazy. And we are probably going to get up to actually one kilometer per second. This is a substantial improvement on my previous best. <laughs> I'm impressed. I didn't expect it to, to go down like this. I was pretty sure we were just going to explode in a fireball on the launch pad. You can see the outline of Kerbal there. Or Kerbin. And... Man, there's 150,000. There's a kilometer per second acceleration. We're about to do our final decoupling here. And hopefully we'll just, you know, fly through space. Continue. Oh, we're not accelerating, are we? We are auto-saving, though. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that auto-save screen. And there is 200,000. How far away is the Mun? Man! Alright, we're going to warp like crazy. And just see how far we can go. 310. It looks like we hit like 311,000 as a peak. And now we will fall, oh my god, incredibly quickly back down to Earth. <laughs> And we'll see, uh, I kind of want to see if my Kerbals are going to survive. Instead of popping down over the ocean, it does indeed appear that we are going to pop down uh, in the middle of, like, the Eurasian plains here. But, you know, I mean, we're, we're traveling unbelievably quickly, which kind of frightens me. There goes our parachutes, which is going to slow us down. I probably should have waited to use that until a little bit later. I didn't realize how close to the surface we were. Man, when did that happen? We were in space a second ago. And with that, we will land... ...in... ...20 to 30 seconds. Oh, never mind! <laughs> Killed in action. I thought they were gonna be... They were coming down at 17 meters per second. How fast is that? I've forgotten the conversion to turn that into... ...kilometers per hour. It's tons... Of I'm not even going to worry about it. But in any case, it was like 60 kilometers an hour, somewhere around there. Maybe 80 kilometers an hour. 
I, I guess that makes sense. But in any case, they were they were brave Kerbals. We need to go back to our launch pad quickly here. Uh, let's see. Highest altitude, 311,000 meters. Pretty impressive. At least I think. Uh, we got to 1.8 kilometers per second. It was a 20-minute flight, although, of course, I sped up a lot of the time. Uh, let's go back to our vehicle assembly building. And, yeah. Surprise, surprise, Mark II. I'm trying to think of what I want to do for this one for the future. Because uh, I think we're, we're making more progress than I would have expected. Or maybe than anyone would have expected, <laughs> honestly. Uh, one thing we could do, I guess, is... I know people are against this, but maybe in the future we could take uh, some radial decouplers. I don't, I forgot where I put those. And we could set this to like triple symmetry. Yeah, and just set them up like this and set up like another row of, of solid fuel boosters. In fact, that's probably what I'm going to do next time. I know people malign my use of solid fuel boosters, but I think we're going to be able to make this, make this baby purr a little bit more than she did already. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Encouraging progress here despite the death of three of our fellow comrades, but I will see you guys next time.